Hello guys and welcome back to Unboxing Show. Hey, here I have a box from Diabolic DVD and I have not been recently ordering anything from there because the postage and shipping fees and import fees, they are just so damned expensive. So I have been uh, kind of like uh, leaving that out of the options. But now there's a cauldron thing, this cauldron label that Really, it's the only place to get these cauldrons. And yeah, since the Diabolic DVD had a sale in their site and there's a couple of new cool titles from Diabolic DVD, so I just thought that, what the fuck, let's order some Diabolic DVD. So here's a small but very spicy package for you. So let's, let's do this. Let's do this damn package. I have already unboxed it previously because I wanted to watch them, so... That is basically a good thing, because now I can talk to you more about the film then. Okay, the first film we have here is something called The Last Match. And what the hell is a last match? Well, um, it's a Coltron release. And mind you that this is a pretty, pretty, pretty beautiful slipcover. Wow, wow, look at this. All these American football players shooting guns and watching out the helicopters and all the explosions and shit. And then let's see the insides of there. Here we have the same picture than in the slipcover back cover. And um, also in a cauldron style, these are very top notch releases. We got a re reversible sleeve and they're using the original artwork of this thing. This is a 1991 Italian production directed by Fabrizio De Angelis. <laughs> the guy who also directed Thunder and a bunch of other Italian action movies. And this is his, <laughs> gotta be one of his worst films. And by worst, I don't mean it was bad, but I think it was very funny kind of bad. Actually, it has a pretty good cast in it. It's got Ernst Borgnine, Charles Napier, Martin Balsam and Henry Silva also in this film. And this film is about these American football players who go to this kind of banana republic in the South, South America to free a daughter of one of these football players who has been captured by the local authorities by the false claims of drug trafficking. So what they do <laughs> is go to the country, get guns from somewhere, bazookas, machine guns, and they attack the prison, which, by the way, is led by Henry Silva. So, <laughs> don't expect that any, like, very explosive type of trashy action. No, all the action is basically left to the last 15 minutes, but it's got a pretty amazing last 15 minutes, that I can tell you. And, hey, from this cast, I think Aaron Sporknine is pretty good, but <laughs> Martin Balsam is clearly, like, reading out of paper his lines. And I kind of felt sorry for the guy, because I think he was very old in when they were making this film, and he really has to endure the heat of this place, whatever they shot the picture. And it, he looks like he really don't want to be there. Okay. But this release includes the booklet about the making of the film Cl uh, Gidron Gang, Fabrizio De Angelis, The Last Match. Okay, and by, by the way, by the way, I'm pretty sure that this picture here, this picture he here came from my site, videospace.fi. And I can prove it to you, because here is Kunnian Koitos. I have scanned this, and what do you know? This is the Finnish Kunnian Koitos. The, uh, same film, the last match here, and hey, look at this, look at this. This thing here has the exact, exactly same sticker than is in my copy, so... <laughs> Glad to be a part of Cauldron's team, but yeah, if you didn't see, here's the Finnish VHS, yeah. Okay, then we also get the nice looking Japanese posters of the film. Okay, it's a small poster. Last match, great stuff. The Mastiffs. And then the Japanese poster. Oh my god, this is incredibly, incredibly badass. But the film, like I said, 
<laughs> it's pretty bad. It's pretty bad, but it's funny kind of bad. I really enjoyed watching it again. But for the fans of trashy Italian cinema, this is a must buy. And speaking of <laughs> trashy Italian cinema, oh my god, top line. Holy mother in Jesus hell. <laughs> <laughs> Just look at this cover. Now, this is like Ghana poster. I don't think if this is a real... Were they like uh, ordering this poster art for this film? I really don't know. But that I do know that I, I really, really like this cover. Top line. Frank Conero starring in this top line. And this is an Italian science fiction action film from year 1988. And it's about this Frank Conero's character who goes to this kind of banana republic <laughs> once again and tries to find this old treasure. And then he finds the treasure ship inside this cave and it turns out that this thing actually is a UFO, holy shit. And then he's chased by the secret government agency and also the aliens, thus the alien Terminator. Yes, this film kind of like, it, it's very boring at first, but it becomes interesting when this alien Terminator comes in. And I think he comes in like in the 15 minute mark of this film. So pretty late in the film, but <laughs> after that, it's a glorious blast of bad, bad Italian trashy cinema. Um, and with Ar Franco Nero, uh, there is also G George Kennedy and Mary Stavin. Oh my God, that baby. She's very, she's fucking hot, man. And it was directed by Nello Rossatti, which is kind of like an unfamiliar director to me. But no, well, he, at least he did this with Franco Nero. And there was interview with Franco Nero, which I watched. And also interview with uh, Eugenio Ercolani, the guy who has been curating these Cauldron film releases. And he is talking about the strange case of Ted Archer. And then we have some sort of a alien theories of top line by parapolitics and researcher Robert Scala. And also audio commentary by, by the film historian Eric Zalwari. Zaldivari. So, okay. And also this release includes the nice looking booklet about the making of the film. And all these posters. And this don't have finished release VHS cover because this was never released in Finland. Fortunately or unfortunately. Well, it's not that great of a film. I really liked Last Match more, but it's a curiosity and it's a nice curiosity. Especially if you got this special edition with this Ghana, <laughs> Ghana film poster. This is just... Fucking bolster was crazy. I love it. I absolutely love this. And this is not bad either. And from sale, check it out. I snatched this contraband. I thought this was out of print, but I managed to find one copy still. And this is a Lucio Fulci film from 1980. And this is like an Italian crime film. And it is about, about this Luca Te... Uh, a smuggler who is uh, runs this kind of smuggling operation in Na Naples and then there's this French homosexual gangster who wants to invade Naples and bring on the drugs. But then Luca and the older older mafia guys team up and fight this very evil bastard. It's got very nihilistic violence in it and hey <laughs> It's got some Lucio Fulci gore, and this is the easily the most goriest uh, Italian crime film I have ever seen. I mean, people's heads are being exploded, brains are being shut off, females are being raped and tortured, and even one, one girl's face is burned with a blowtorch, with a uh, grueling accuracy in the detail of this gruesome act. Oh my god, this is great. And... Hey, this one guy gets shot in the throat and it, the effect is much similar like to that compared with the chompy flesh eaters. You remember the death scene of Tisa Farrow. For the fans of Italian violent cinema, this is a must on. And hey, 
the cover, slip cover is, I think this is great, or stop cover. Uh, Luca il Contrabande, this is the original film name, Luca il Contrabande, and mind you, this is uh, Cauldron 007, and hey, I forgot to tell about these other things, this, this is Cauldron number 017, and last match was Cauldron 015. So this is a little bit earlier release, and hey, check this out, this even includes uh, CD, the soundtrack of the film, and hey, I kind of forgot to put this in the player, but hey, here's the soundtrack listing, and that is great news, because this film has a fucking fantastic sound soundtrack from Fabio Fritzi, it's very groovy, and I'm looking forward to, or I'm hearing forward to hear it, <laughs> if this is something that you can say. And hey, we have some collectible lobby cards showing the grisly violent scenes of this film. Nice. And then the film contained some nice extras interviews uh, from the cast and also from Fabio Fritzi. I think it has a very nice set of extras. I think there was over hours worth of of extras in this thing, so really this is a top-notch release, and previously I had the Finnish DVD, and this clearly is an upgrade to it. Well, the picture quality uh, is a full G film from this era, so come on, it's got this weird foggy looking picture, so everything looks very soft, but clearly this is an improvement over the previous DVD I had, and I am absolutely no regrets of getting this out. This is entertaining film, and one of a kind, gory crime film, so I recommend this. And it's a great release, so brilliant. And then, hey, from this new batch of films comes Off Balance, a Ruggero Deodato film. And this is Cauldron 016 number. And this is a giallo film, uh, kind of like a uh, late giallo. This was from year 1987. And, uh, well, last of the Ruggero Deodato's 80s films of this caliber. Michael York and Donald Pleasance and Edwig Frenich plays in this film, so it's got a surprisingly great cast for Ruggiero Deodato film. And this is about this guy, a pianist guy, Michael York, who has this rare disease that he's getting fucking older. And for some reason or another, this affects his mind and he starts to kill people. I think the makeup for Michael York is done pretty decently and the murder scenes are nice and bloody. But okay, I have one one problem with this film. I don't think this is paced very well. I think the much the interesting stuff is in the front of the film, but the kind of like it film starts to you know slow things down towards the end of the second act and the third act is just weak, man. I enjoyed Donald Pleasant's performance and I enjoyed the gory scenes, but I, I don't think it was a that great of a film. But let's see the interiors of the film. Hey, it's got original soundtrack and the soundtrack listing here. So, and then we have the mini poster in cauldron style. Bestia Sensina. Okay. All right, this is the, I remember this art for, I have the Australian VHS, but uh, that was the cover in it, but this I have not previously seen. Un delitto poco comune. Okay. And the release had, once again, had some great interviews. Ruggero Deodato, his final interview, and he feels like kind of melancholy guy in that film. It was shot in 2022, and it was not long after that that he passed on. So it's a great last interview. But it kind of paints a guy of bitter and sad guy. So that's kind of that's kind of bummer. But also this includes audio commentary with Italian film histories Eugenio Ercolani and Troy Howard. So it's not a not a bad set of extras in it. But I don't think I can wholeheartedly recommend Off Balance. 
for curiosity's sake, I think it belongs. Ruchero Deodato fans film shelf. And it's a great release. And this, hey, 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 who you, 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 <laughs> yeah. This is not a cauldron film. This is a synapse films release. First of all, Crocodile is a Taiwanese. <laughs> it's a Thai monster movie, giant monster movie from year 1980, and it's produced by Dick Randall and directed by some guy, guy called uh, Sompote Sands. Okay. And first of all, this was very strictly limited topless slip cover, so you can see that this girl doesn't wear any any bra and uh, <laughs> nice nice looking picture. But here there is a bra in this this cover, so this was strictly limited, and I pre-ordered this the instant that this came on. I had seen this previously in Cinema Drone Film Festival, and I re was I remembered that I liked this very very much. But after watching this Sombote Sands film again, <laughs> I kind of felt like that. Okay, hey, probably <laughs> I was kind of like mesmerized because because the atmosphere and the uh, you know, beers enjoyed before the film, so they were kind of like getting on to me. So I think I, I kind of like overrated this film. We don't have a booklet describing the making of the film like we have on these cauldron stuff, but we have a catalog from um, Synapse titles. So, okay, this might come handy later on. But basically, there's not too much to tell about this film. There's a giant crocodile killing people in Taiwan, and it's kind of like a Jaws. Similar characters are in this film, like in the Jaws. And finally, these three guys go out hunting the crocodile. And gotta tell you, the miniature work is not too bad in this film. But I think overall, it wasn't as good, nearly as good as I remembered it to be, but... What can I tell you? This has been very rare film. And this is the first, to my knowledge, the first official release since the Dutch uh, VHS in English language. So that's a very huge achievement for Synapse films. And uh, I think this has been in the making like for lots of years, many, many years. But I don't know what's the delay, but I'm very glad that finally we have this great looking slipcover and this very rare film on Blu-ray and the picture quality. It's not, it's not bad. It's not bad at all. And this even had the audio commentary with writer and film historian Lee Gambin and video interview with the original Crocodile Fangs director Wong Se Li. And it was funny interview in that sense that this Wong Se Le, who is the original director, he didn't even know that this film has ever been released in Western countries. And <laughs> Also, he didn't know that Sompote Sands, who is the direct, who is the producer of the film, so he has been credited as the director of this film in Western countries, and he was like, "Okay, I didn't know that. Okay, let me look into that." <laughs> And one more for the road, Shanghai Joe, a Mario Cayano film, a gore spaghetti western from Cauldron Films, and this is Cauldron 013, and I was lucky enough. Um, I missed the pre-orders, but fortunately for me, this came on sale, and this is a very gorgeous, gorgeous as fuck slip cover, stop casing, whatever you call that. But here we have Shanghai Joe, and simply, <laughs> simply put, this film is about this Chinese guy who is in the Wild West, and basically what he wants, he just wants to be a cow cowboy, but the, all the white people are very racist, and they try to fuck him up, and he has to fuck them up back, back. so that leads lots of gory kung fu fights and shootings and whatnot. <laughs> so basically it is a very, a very usual western story, only with the guy being martial artists, the lead guy so that's it um, i like this very much and i have seen this plenty of times il mio nome jangajo a soundtrack 
and this is the listing for the soundtrack. And hey, it's got a reversible sleeve. Okay, this is the original artwork. Maybe, maybe I just put the original artwork on the top of this thing. And this got interview with Master Katsusoki Miku Ryu, and he was one of these karate guys, or the only karate guy who goes against Shanghai Joe in the end. So, and he, I was kind of surprised that he remembered things from <laughs> from making of this film. And then there was this nice mini documentary, East Meets West. It was done a visual essay done by film historian Eric Saldivar, and he is telling us about the history of. Uh, Films that have like oriental uh, Asian folks in spaghetti westerns. Now <laughs> that that is actually a small genre. Nice, great looking poster art. Excellent. I do recommend this film. It's entertaining and fast paced and kind of funny. And yeah. It is gory too, so what is there not to like then? And great soundtrack, by the way. Have to listen to that on this CD. Okay, so there we have nice bunch of releases and great rare films. Thank you Synapse and thank you Cauldron and thank you Diabolic DVD for, you know, having the opportunity to order these even here in Finland. Hey. Great stuff and all is good, except one thing, the price. And I'm not shitting on Diabolic DVD or Cauldron or Synapse Films, but the general complaint here I have that these things are getting so expensive. I mean, 175 is the subtitle total in euros for these six films. Now, that wouldn't be bad. That would be like under 30 bucks for each film, on 30 euros for each one of these films. But then you have to add their shipping fees, which is 44 dollars. 44 euros, same thing. And then, that's, that wouldn't be so bad either, but then you have to add import fees, which in this case they were 52 euros. Holy shit, 52 fucking euros. And also you have to pay this like this handling fees and that is three euros and 10 cents. So basically the, this whole thing cost me 275 euros for six films. God damn it, that's, that's, fucking, that's fucking expensive, man. And okay, it's 46 euros per pop. I mean, this is definitely worth the 46 euros, but I think the people who watch Netflix as their main source of entertainment, they would never understand the appeal of these films. But I know if you're watching this, you will understand that. Hey, if you have any comments or questions, put them down below. And also remember to hit that like button and subscribe if you are new here. Until the next unboxing or live show, I thank you for watching. And hey, now go check out this video. It might be even better. See ya. Video talk. We're talking. Video talk. Bitch, we're talking. Video talk. Get your video talk. You best subscribe. You best subscribe and die. You best subscribe or dive to video talk.